An article here writes of an ancient bone-carved harpoon, similar to this one, that was found in the middle of the North Sea in 1931. To understand how it got there, let's back up a bit. Before the flourishing of the ancient Greek and Roman civilizations, before the construction of the Stonehenge Circle and the first Egyptian pyramids, and even before the first cities began in ancient Sumer, was the last Ice Age. It was called the Pleistocene, and it lasted about two and a half million years and ended about 12,000 years ago. At its peak, about a third of the total landmass on Earth was covered by glaciers. These are massive bodies of ice that form on sloping land, such as mountain ranges and volcanoes, when annual temperatures are low enough that more ice accumulates from snowfall than melts away. These glaciers, because of their weight, are constantly, but slowly, being pulled down to lower elevations in layers. They're also melting from below, because the intense pressure from the glacier's weight causes the lowest layers of ice to become water. During the Pleistocene, so much ocean water evaporated and was stuck on these glaciers year-round that global sea levels were much lower than they are today, about 400 feet lower. Because of this, shorelines around the world extended farther than they do today. The light green represents current land masses, and the dark green represents the extended shorelines when sea levels were much lower. This, for instance, is how humans crossed in North America from Asia, across what is now the Bering Strait. Another of these land bridges is in the North Sea, a place archaeologists call Doggerland. Named after Dutch fishing boats called Doggers, this landmass connected Great Britain to continental Europe. During the Pleistocene, when Doggerland was exposed due to the much lower sea levels, humans hunted large woolly animals, such as the mammoth and rhinoceros, who were well adapted to the cold. This coincided with the Paleolithic Age, when humans used rough stone weapons for hunting this large game. Over thousands of years, temperatures increased and nearby glaciers began to melt, forming a growing network of freshwater rivers, lakes, and marshes throughout Doggerland. This geologic transition coincided with the human transition from the Paleolithic to the Mesolithic. During this period, humans continued their Paleolithic hunter-gatherer lifestyles, but began hunting prey with smaller and more finely crafted stone and bone weapons. It's this type of weapon that was discovered in 1931 at the bottom of the North Sea. But the presence of such tools on the seabed didn't necessarily indicate there had been land there. While the oldest known boat is this dugout canoe from about 8000 BC, archaeologists believe Homo sapiens may have begun traveling by sea at least 50,000 years ago. However, evidence of ancient rivers and lakes have been identified through seismic mapping of the seabed, and soil and pollen analysis and seabed sediment has provided evidence of the plant and animal life on Doggerland. Further evidence is seen in ancient forests in Pet Level, off the coast of England, in which trees such as oak, elm, and birch once grew, but would have had to grow in fresh water. Over the following centuries and millennia, the glaciers melted further. The rivers and lakes grew, and sea levels rose, until, about 8,000 years ago, all dogger land was submerged and Great Britain became an island. In littoral areas now covered by seawater, and in areas covered by thawing permafrost in the northern latitudes, archaeologists will likely discover many more artifacts that link us to our distant past. Maybe this will include artifacts buried in the permafrost from millions of years ago, before it was frozen over during the last ice age. Or perhaps they will find new cave art from the Paleolithic, in what might be underwater caves off current shorelines. And it's likely they'll continue to find artifacts, such as tools, sculpture, and pottery, from the Mesolithic during which humans lived on now submerged areas, such as Doggerland in the North Sea. This should, over time, give us a better understanding of, and wider perspective on, the planetary changes and ancestral human development that have led us to the present. Have a great day.